Good afternoon all. I was just uh, pacing around the garden, bemoaning the dreadful weather, when I noticed that on my solar power system, my charge controller, my PWM5, doesn't have a flashing blue light. And I thought, well, what's happened there? Probably bad connections caused by rust. So I've put a DVM across the battery terminals and I'm getting 13.36 volts. Well, when the charge controller is uh, pulse width modulating, that would be 13.5. It's not far below that, so is it sort of partially working? Now if I disconnect the charge controller from the battery, so there's definitely nothing coming in, that still sits there at 13.36 and it's not dropping down. So the battery must be very well charged. I am surprised that doesn't uh, drift down more towards 13 or even 12 and a half. It seems to be just sitting up there at that high voltage. Very strange. I mean, it's not surprising really that this isn't working. I mean, look at the state of this. It's all melted and uh, because the connections were not very good, a bit rusty, uh, what's happened is the, uh, the connections have got hot, the plastic's melted, it's just a total mess. It's also all rusted up. So uh, I think I might take this inside and just do a quick check to uh, see whether this charge controller is actually still working. I thought I'd just check uh, in this tool shed, my solar shed, whether there are any more controllers in here but uh, I don't think so. Light bulbs and connectors. Rubbish really, some old magazines in here. But I have found these, some um, of these modified crocodile clips with 4mm banana terminals and these aren't rusty at all. That one and that one seem in pretty good condition so maybe I'll um, put those on the battery when I come back out uh, possibly with another charge controller. It's disgusting in here, it's all full of spiders in the winter. They seem to disappear in the summer because I think it gets very hot in here, but it's horrible in the damp winter. And uh, these solar panels aren't going to be very effective covered in leaves, are they really? I'm not even sure if uh, all these four panels are still working. I'll have to check them I think next summer. So I think the first thing I'll do is just cut all these um, banana plugs off because they're all useless. And this yellow one, as I say, is completely finished. Because when I tested the controllers, my test setup uh, involved using the bare wire ends. So let's do that. So the test setup works like this in here. I've got a couple of... Um, spade connectors with pins, clothing pins, I think they are, soldered onto them. So I'll connect these onto the battery. And then the charge controller pushes onto these pins. I just literally take the wire and push it onto the pin. So let's do that. That's the negative. There's the positive. Ah, now that's interesting. There's a very dim glow from the LED. So what does that mean? Hmm, interesting. What how many volts are on this battery? And for that, I'll use this precision voltmeter, which I've got a bit of Velcro stuck on there, so I can stick that onto there. Let's hook it up. Well, the battery seems fine, 12.3 volts. Still got that uh, dim glow on the LED in there. Now, at the other end, I've got a similar sort of arrangement. Uh, a couple of clothes pins pushed into uh, one of these 2.1 mil connectors. So let's push the positive into the yellow side. Careful not to stab myself while I'm doing this. Right, and then into there I plug a power supply. So this is the power supply I always used. Um, it's a linear power supply with a transformer, it's quite heavy. Um, it's nominally 12 volts, half an amp out, but um, you do get about uh, 16 or 17 volts, I think, from this thing off load. 
In fact, let's plug it in and just check what the offload voltage is. Yeah, so this PSU has an offload voltage actually of 18 and a half volts, and then it would just drop down when loaded up. Uh, so this is ideal for sort of uh, simulating a solar panel. So let's put that into the controller. So let's plug that in and just see whether the battery responds. And it doesn't. So it looks like the charge controller is dead. That blue LED, is that still on? Can't really see it now. But certainly it's not switching on, passing anything through to the battery. These connections don't look very brilliant. So there's definitely something wrong with that. So I think I'm going to cut it open and uh, have a look inside. See if any moisture's got in, maybe. So let's cut the black outer sleeving and then just tear it off. Destroy the label and everything like that. I'd be very interested to see if moisture has got through the hot glue sealed ends. Okay, there we are. Let's take a closer look. And uh, yeah, you can see that moisture has got into this. That uh, water there, if I sweep it, it doesn't go away. So that's on the inside. There's moisture all around the LED. There's moisture on this side near the voltage measurement potential divider. Well, that could be measuring anything. But if moisture's got into the chip or the regulator, then it's, not, it's just not going to work. So yeah, there's water inside there. Now the question is, how's it got in? Because when I was developing this thing, I discovered that the seal between heat shrink and hot glue is actually extremely effective. Um, but one thing I have noticed down this side is it doesn't look like the seal works terribly well on this edge. I can't get a very good image of that. You can just about see there is a, a hole there. Let's try and get in a bit closer. There's just something going on here. There's not very good adhesion between... In fact, you can see water bubbling inside there. Uh, between the heat shrink and the glue at this end, it all seems to have come adrift. Now, whether it was like that when I made it, or whether it's gone like that subsequently, I don't really know. There's definitely water in there, isn't there? You can see it moving. And also you can see corrosion... Uh, on the copper tracks, it's actually gone slightly green. There's uh, you can see froth in there and moisture. You'll probably see that moving if I press it. Uh, and more corrosion on the copper. So yeah, this one's had water in it. And again, water inside there, which I can't wipe away. So that's on the inside. Yeah, the water's got in. Now you can also see moisture running up along the red wire there as I move it inside the plastic there's actually room for it to move and you can see the plastic moving both on the outside and the inside and so moisture could have got through there which is odd I know that the grip between the uh, hot glue and this uh, PVC wire I assume it's PVC um, wasn't a good adhesion but it certainly was a tight fit and I've not had uh, very many go like this where water's got in at all so it's quite surprising this. Now I'm just wondering if I can make it work again by cutting the front off. So I'm just going to cut uh, plastic off the front and heating the whole thing up with a hairdryer to dry it out. So let's cut the plastic along that edge. And along this edge, the heat shrink I mean, and then I'll cut down the front here, past that diode, let's tear that off. So. Good, that's fine. Cutters. Mm, 
Hmm. Don't want to pull too hard on it, otherwise I'll pull all these wires off. Let's cut that with the cutters. Right, so that's the circuit exposed. I'm now going to use my heat gun to uh, warm that up. And try and take all this moisture out. I think we might be warming that a bit too much because the glue looks like it's just starting to melt here. Oh well, means I can get the hot air in there better. Uh, well now it's smoking so I think I might have got it a bit too hot. Yes, it's all a bit melty now, the glue's all melted. Yeah, okay, well anyway, it should be dry. Now while I'm in the process of heating this up and melting all the glue, which is still hot, I've created a little path through here, so of course there's no seal on that end. I mean, the thing's destroyed anyway. Um, but that should have got rid of all the water, so it would be interesting to connect it back up. But it's still very hot and melted, all the glue's still a bit squidgy. So I think perhaps I'll just let that cool down a bit. And uh, now it seems fine. Two flashes, two rapid flashes, that means 12.2. 12.2 on there, actually it's more like 12.3 so let's attach this uh, connector again so I can put the solar panel or my solar panel simulator back on the input side here's the wire, here's the wire and up goes the voltage So this thing is, um, the MOSFET is turned on, it's passing current through from the solar panel to the battery, and if I let that gradually climb up it will eventually reach the uh, float voltage of 13.5, this should now do a 1, 2, 3 flash, 1, 2, 3, so 13.0, okay it's a bit higher than that tends to underread when there's current flowing through it. But yeah, that's working again. Electronics doesn't like moisture, does it? Well, now I've just let the uh, voltage of the battery drift up to about 13.58. I can just make out that I wrote 13.58 on the back, so that should be the modulation voltage. So it should start pulse width modulating at that voltage. But it's not quite yet. Let's give it a bit longer. And uh, there it is, finally modulating at just under 13.6 volts. The LED is on constantly, although flickering, and that indicates pulse width modulation. So the MOSFET is no longer on permanently. It's actually being turned off. It's mostly on. It's probably almost all on, but just very infrequent or not infrequent, uh, the, the frequency is fixed, it's 122 hertz, but there will be a very small amount of off time per cycle, and that's what that LED is indicating. And that's just holding the battery at this constant voltage. Now I have just had the uh, crazy idea that I could perhaps keep this um, and reseal it by just pouring hot glue <laughs> directly onto the components and just seeing if I can seal it back up, it will almost certainly fail, but I fancy giving it a go. So I'm just warming up my uh, glue gun. Doesn't seem to be very warm yet. Oh, it's just getting warm on the tip there. Uh, my Tech 175-12 from Power Adhesives. I've had this for quite a while using these, um, well, I can't remember what they're called now, the Tech Bond, I think, uh, glue sticks. So let's let that warm up and then just Pour glue all over it. So the glue gun's plugged in and it's drawing 22 watts. Um, and the way I can tell whether the glue gun's hot is that this power drops off gradually as the glue gun gets hotter. And uh, I just remember that when it got down to about 18, that meant that it was hot enough to uh, start gluing. Right, the glue gun should be hot, so let's give this a go. Just literally put hot glue around all the components. Now, I don't think hot glue is particularly hot, so it shouldn't damage the components. If you get it on your fingers, it will. It is hot enough to cause blisters. 
I know from experience. No idea if this is going to be successful really, but it's worth a try, isn't it? Resurrect one of these controllers. I may have to have several layers of this stuff. And it's all running over the edge. Hmm. Well, let's see how we do. Well, it's a big gluey mess. Uh, I don't think I've managed to seal up all the holes. And of course, now what's happened is my glue gun has uh, run out of glue stick. And I know that the glue sticks are up in the loft. So <laughs> that's a bit of a disaster, really. Still works, though, as the glue slowly starts to set. I'm not going to touch it yet because it's still very hot. But I've plugged in the uh, power supply again, and that's rising back up. And I imagine it will start modulating again at 13.6 uh, volts. This thing's flashing away merrily. One, two, three, and about three or four. Might as well take it all the way up to 13.6 and watch it modulate. And there it goes. So maybe I'll just keep adding hot glue until the whole thing is just an enormous blob of hot glue. It will mean a trip up into the loft though. Oh well, for the moment. Cheerio.